Good evening, everyone. So my next video is on the topic desirable drug drug interactions. And before I start my video, I want to request you if this video be as useful to you. And if it is helpful to you, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel that is Dr. Nitika Pharmacology Discussion. And uh, uh, now I'm going to discuss with you desirable drug drug interactions, which are beneficial drug drug interactions that I'm going to discuss with you. First of all, the drug is levodopa, and the another interaction with the drug is the benzirazine or carbidopa. It is the desirable drug drug interaction. How? Because carbidopa is the peripheral decarboxylase inhibitor, which prevents the peripheral dopa decarboxylation of the levodopa. So more of the levodopa enters the CNS, and uh, then the it gets converted to uh, dopamine, and uh, then the action of the Dopamine comes in as the uh, it levels of dopamine increase in the body, and this can be used as the anti Parkinsonian drug. It means it's a decarboxylation, the periphery is reduced, but uh, it's a, uh, uh, more of the dopamine come, goes to the CNS, and the more effect is seen in the CNS. Combination is used in Parkinson's disease, carbidopa reduced dose requirement. This is when carbidopa will be used, given. The levodopa dose will be reduced because if the, the carbidopa X, so for more of the levodopa will enter the brain, and uh, that will lead to uh, more of reduce the dose concentration requirement to achieve the therapeutic concentration and minimal adverse effects. And there will be minimal adverse effects because the peripheral decarboxylation will be uh, inhibited. So in the periphery, dopamine will not be produced, and dopamine gets converted to adrenaline in the uh, noradrenaline in the uh, periphery, which can lead to tachycardia, palpitations, arrhythmia, diarrhea, all these and convulsions in these uh, as the side effects will be prohibited because the effect will be seen in the CNS, not in the periphery like heart and GAT. Carbidopa itself does not cross the blood brain barrier. Carbidopa itself it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier. Now, adrenaline, which is the sympathomimetic, and the noradrenaline and the phenylephrine, they interact with lignocaine, which is the local anesthetic drug, lidocaine. Now, adrenaline as causes the vasoconstriction by acting on the alpha-1 receptors, so it will reduce the systemic absorption of the lidocaine the, uh, from the site of action. The absorption will be reduced of the lidocaine because it will vasoconstrict the blood vessels, so systemic absorption will be reduced. So lidocaine, it is the local anesthetic drug, and it, uh, adrenaline, it prolongs the duration of action of the lidocaine, and it minimizes the side effects of the lidocaine, and contraindicated for use of adrenaline with the ligno, uh, with the local anesthetic are hypertension, CAT, and hydroxychloroquine. And though these these are contraindicated, use of adrenaline is contraindicated in the hypertension, CAT, and hydroxychloroquine. For brain research, as it inhibits the tubular secretion of penicillin, so levels of penicillin will increase in the body and cephalosporins. So small doses of penicillin can be used to produce the same effect. These are the beta lactamectin antibodies acting on the gram positive bacteria. So uh, this can be used, uh, they can probably it decreases the renal tubular secretion. So it can increase the levels of penicillin in the body. Next is sulfonamide and trimethoprim. I've already discussed in the previous video that the glutamate and pteridine. Uh, it will not be it will not really lead to the formation of dehydrofolic acid. Um, by the folic acid synthase and uh, dehydrofolic acid uh, reductase will be inhibited by the trimethoprim and the folic acid synthase is inhibited by sulfamethoxazole. So there will be no formation of the folic acid in the body. Tetrahydrofolic hydrofolic acid, folinic acid will not be produced. So that can lead to bacterial folate metabolism is inhibited. That is sequential blockage. Marked enhancement of the antibacterial activity by these two, both these drugs, when given, it can lead to supra additive effect. And these um, are individually the sulfomethoxazole, which is the sulfonamide, and the thymomethoprim, these are bacteriostatic in nature, but when they're used in combination, they become bacteriocidal in action. Now, aminoglycosides, these act on the gram positive bacteria, and penicillins also. 
the uh, sorry amino glycosides take on the gram negative bacteria and penicillin take on the gram positive bacteria so individually they are actually having the narrow spectrum of activity but when they use in combination they they become broad spectrum so they can be used also in the mixed infections because penicillin they act on the gram positive and amino glycosides on the gram negative so extend the spectrum better so coverage is there but these drugs are not given in the same syringe because they can precipitate when given in the same syringe because of the physical infections so separate syringes has to be used penicillin and beta lactamase inhibitors like clavulanic cases are bactam tazobactam and penicillin these uh, are used in the combination because penicillin it gets metabolized in the body by beta lactamase enzyme and when we give the beta lactamase inhibitor so it will not be metabolized in the body so action of penicillin extended action of penicillin antibacterial action comes in of the penicillin in the body means beta lactamase inhibitors protect penicillin from inactivation by beta lactamase and extend the age of antibacterial action compared to penicillin alone vitamin b12 and folic acid vitamin b12 and folic acid metabolism are linked how this vitamin b12 is the active cellular coenzyme for demethylation of tetra hydro folate to dna means uh, it leads to formation of the vitamin b12 is the cellular coenzyme which is responsible for the formation of dna and folic acid is the substrate for an important reaction that involves vitamin b12 and folic acid is the important substrate uh, which involves the uh, it is important for an important reaction that involves vitamin b12 and it is necessary for the synthesis of the dna so required for all the dividing cells so deficiency of any of the vitamin b12 or folic acid can lead to megaloblastic anemia and vitamin b12 deficiency in addition can lead to neurological manifestations and so folic acid given along with the uh, given alone can increase the neurological uh, manifestations of the vitamin b12 deficiency both should be given together this vitamin b12 uh, it is used in the treatment of neurological deficiencies so uh, so folic acid when it is given alone it cannot treat the neurological manifestations so vitamin b12 and folic acid has to be given in combination plus folic acid is the important it is the substrate which is required for the synthesis of dna uh, so vitamin b12 and folic acid are given in combination iron and vitamin c is vitamin c causes the reduction of ferricine to ferricine and this ferrous iron uh, has to be uh, this has to be formed ferrous form of the iron should be there for the better adsorption and vitamin c increases its adsorption because it reduces the ferric iron to the ferrous iron and this ferrous iron is responsible ferrous form is responsible for its adsorption from the stomach and intestine ace inhibitors and diuretics diuretics ace inhibitors are known to cause hyperkalemia and diuretics are known to cause hypokalemia so the ace inhibitors decrease sodium and sorry diuretics decrease sodium and ace inhibitors are more efficacious in patients with depleted sodium so combination enhances the therapeutic effect of each other by minimizing the adverse effects this as ace inhibitors they cause the hypokalemia sorry hyperkalemia and diuretics they cause the hypokalemia so their effect is contractive so adverse effects are contractive so they have to be used in combination and also the diuretics also they cause the hyponatremia and uh, this ace inhibitor is more efficacious with the in patients with depleted that is in patients with hyponatremia these are more efficacious nifedipine and propanolol now this uh, uh, nifedipine uh, it is the calcium channel blocker uh, it it causes the uh, reflex tachycardia it causes the vasodilatation and causes the reflex tachycardia and propanolol it causes the bradycardia because it is the uh, depressant action on the heart is having so it causes uh, uh, bradycardia and nifedipine it causes the reflex tachycardia so these are given in combination this the cause vasodilatation reflex tachycardia so these are given in combination to contract the effects the side effects given together as antiangiogenics as they contract each other side effects on cardiac rhythm thank you that's all for the desirable uh, drug injections i hope you understood this lecture 
And if you understood this lecture, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel that is Dr. Nitika Pharmacology Discussion. Thank you. Be happy, be healthy, be wealthy, be safe. Thank you.